There are some of our acquaintance here in this church who have that kind of record. We know who they are. Are we willing to go to them for advice? Are we willing to turn to them when we are perplexed and say, what do you think I should do according to God's word? And then to do it, even if we don't like it. Be submitted to such as these and to all fellow workers and laborers. We are called to submit to such as these, a submission to those of faithful service. What does that mean? Because it sounds like, you know, a little much. <laughs> What does that mean? Well, I think that Paul may describe the kind of submission that he has in mind here in Ephesians chapter 5, 15 through 21. And again, I'll read an extended passage, but I will keep my comments to a minimum. Look carefully then how you walk, not as unwise, but wise, making best use of the time because the days are evil. Therefore, do not be foolish, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery, but be filled with the Spirit, addressing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melodies to the Lord with your heart, giving thanks always for everything to God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So we have a summary of Christian living. The end of that summary is submitting to one another out of reverence for Christ. And then he goes on and tells us what that submission looks like in a number of relationships in the following few paragraphs. Submission is not reflexive obedience in Ephesians chapter 5 and 6. Submission is boundaried by reasonable rules. And I think that when he says sub submit to such as these and to every fellow worker and laborer, this sort of thing is what he has in mind. Final bit of challenge here. Young people, you have access to wisdom and lifelong devotion in many of the older members of this church and in the older people of your lives. And yes, I mean your parents too. You have access to people who through long years of faithfulness have good instincts about what should happen next. Please don't be so proud or so foolish as to not ask for their advice or as to having received it, ignore it. They're not telling you these things because it's convenient for them. They're telling you these things because they see paths and they know where they lead. To such as these, submit yourself. Give recognition to their lives of faithfulness to the Lord. Follow their advice. It will work out almost every time. And when it doesn't work out, it's probably because you had misplaced expectations. Brothers and sisters, be watchful. Stand firm in the faith. Be courageous. Be strong. Let all that we do here be done in love. Father, thank you for this summary and for Paul's instruction through these many months that we have had in the book of 1 Corinthians. Thank you for his love and patience and his example as he deals with a very difficult church. Thank you for the fellowship that we have here, which does not include the difficulty that Paul had with the church at Corinth. And yet there is so much that we can learn. And so I pray that we as believers would be watchful, that we would stand firm in the faith, that we'd be courageous and strong. And as we are among one another, that we would do all that we are doing in love. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Please stand with me as we sing the last couple of verses of Be Thou My Vision.